Come on into the library. It's a place where I love to be. Look in a book, here's a story for you. Who makes stories when the day is through? Who makes stories when the day is through? Story makers, story makers. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers. Stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Milton Wordsworth. Working through the night till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous, stories are fun. Come on, be a story maker. Story makers. Night. Hello. Has everybody gone? The sun is down, the stars are bright. Story makers come out at night. Milton Wordsworth, story maker and magical maestro, at your service. Milton, Milton, come and look at what we've Quickly. found. Mm. Oh, fascinating, mm. Jelly. Mm. What do you think it is? Oh. We think it's secret information. Ah, well, what you need is one of these to help you see it better. Oh, oh. Uh, have oh. a look, Milton. Mm. Uh, do you think that it might be hidden treasure right here in the library? It all looks like gobbledygook to me. Gobbledygook? Oh. What? <laughs> Maybe it's a poem. Mm. I do love poetry. It says ketchup. Mm. It says toilet rolls. Toilet rolls. And it says washing up liquid. <gasps> Certainly not fine poetry. Mm -mm. Hey, wait a minute. What? This is the librarian shopping list. Oh. Oh. Never mind. Why don't we put it in the machine and make a story? A, a story about shopping? Yeah, we wanted a story about exploring. Oh. Well, mm. what if we put the magnifying glass in instead? <gasps> that should give us something more spectacular. <laughs> And perhaps you'd like to put something in too. The secret ingredient that makes the story come to life. Imagination. Mm. Ready? Imagine. Imagine. Imagine a story. It's a playbook. And it's called Explorers. One day, Rosanna and Rufus found Dad's binoculars on the table. When they looked through them, it made everything look very big. That gave Rosanna an idea. They could go exploring. We can use the binoculars to see things up close. Mummy packed an exploring bag with lots of food. Rufus decided to put up a tent. Rosanna took the explorer's bag into the garden. They got into the tent and watched for anything strange. Carefully holding Dad's binoculars, Rosanna had a look through them. The way explorers do. Just then they heard rustling in the bushes. Spiky hair, little nose. Phew, only a hedgehog. Suddenly, Rufus heard another sound. They looked through the binoculars to see what it was. A red shiny back, black legs. Phew, just a beetle. They hid in the tent and saw something on the trampoline. It was green and jumping up and down. Phew, only a grasshopper. Then there was another rustle, this time getting closer and closer. It was creeping up on them. Two enormous feet, two very long hairy legs. It began to speak. What are you doing with those binoculars? A big smiley face peered into the tent. It was Dad. 
And guess what? Dad wanted to be an explorer too. Oh, Jelly, look what I've made. Oh, what is it? <laughs> it's a telescope. It oh. will help us to explore things even further away. Look. Wow. Um, Oh, I can see oh. lots of books and uh, the tops of the bookcases. Oh, and I can see a, a story maker <gasps> at home. <laughs> can, can I have a go? Can I have a go? Yes, of course. Oh, go on. Thank you. Oh, I can see the top of a distant mountain. Oh, really? <laughs> mm, it must be ever so far away. Hmm. No, no, it's that picture of a mountain up there. <laughs> Hey, why don't we put that picture in the story machine? We might get a mountain exploring story. <laughs> That's a good idea, Jackson. <laughs> do you remember what we have to do? Imagine, 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 imagine a, a story. story. Oh, yes, it's working. It's a blue cow story. Blue Cow and Mount Everest. In a field not far away is a herd of cows grazing quietly. One of the cows is most unusual. Blue Cow wonders, wonders about the big world beyond her field. One day, Blue Cow was looking up at the sky. She watched the clouds float by so far, so high. I wonder what it would be like to be high up in the clouds, looking down on the world. She's off again, said the other cows. So Blue Cow caught the bus that stops beside her field. I'd like a return ticket to a high up place, please. There you go, madam. Hold very tight. And they set off for a very high place. And then they arrived. In front of her was the biggest thing she'd ever seen. It was so high, its top stuck out above the clouds. This is Mount Everest. It's the biggest mountain in the whole wide world. Wow! If you're thinking of climbing up Mount Everest, you'll need my help. I'm Morris the Mountain Goat. How kind of you. When can we set off? Minutes later, Morris and Blue Cow started to climb. Morris had given her a rope to hang on to, a thick woolly blue jumper to keep her warm, and some goggles to help her see better higher up the mountain. Morris and Blue Cow climbed for ages and ages. For days and days, they climbed over hard grey rock and soft white snow, they climbed when the sun shone down brightly, and through huge windy snowstorms. When the climbing became difficult for Blue Cow, Morris pulled her up with a rope until, all of a sudden, Morris said, Well, here we are then. Blue Cow climbed up to join Morris. There they were, on top of the mountain, on top of Mount Everest. There were clouds around and below them, and they looked down and saw the rest of the world far away. This is wonderful. We're looking down on the world. Wait till I tell the other cows in my field. Morris helped Blue Cow as they started to climb back down the mountain. Going down was quicker than going up. They slipped and slid over the rocks, through the snow, in the sun, and through the snowstorms, until they arrived back at the bus, which was ready to set off back to Blue Cow's field. Thank you, Morris, said Blue Cow. If you ever want to come for a holiday in a flat field full of lovely green grass, do come and visit. I might just do that. Bye. Hmm. Well done. Do you hmm. like my telescope? Ah, let's have a look. Hmm. It's specially designed so that you can see far, far, far away. Ah, well, we'll soon see about that. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> hmm. Can you see me from over there? Oh, yes. I can see everything and it's all close up. Oh. I can even see your... Oh, is that what it looks like? Oh, what yes. is it? What is it? What is it, Milton? I can see right up your nose. <gasps> oh. Oh, well, well, I did say you could see a long way. <laughs> oh, Milton, shall we make another story with my telescope? Why, certainly, oh, pink and fluffy one. Story machine, we'd like to see how far we can see with Jackson's telescope. Mm. Are you ready with the imagination? Imagine, 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 imagine a story.
Well done, Jackson. It's a Kevin the Spaceman story. What's it called? It's called Planet Custard. Kevin and Spanner in space to explore, seeking out planets never heard of before. Kevin had landed his rocket on a new, rather yellow planet. It seemed that he and Spanner had been in space for a very long time. They were both tired and extremely hungry. The landing was very soft, and the first thing that Kevin noticed was the delicious smell. Mmm, sniffed Kevin. Custard, my favourite thing. I wonder if there are any custard bones, thought Spanner. But Spanner couldn't smell any bones. All he could smell was custard. He licked the ground and it tasted sweet. Mmm, perhaps he'd look for a bone later. Suddenly, he saw a large wobbly blob. The custardy blob blobbled, <laughs> growled Spanner. A yellow beady eye appeared out of the custardy blob and looked at Spanner. Brobble, it blobbled loudly. Spanner whimpered and whined at Kevin. What are you moaning about, said Kevin. Spanner was going to explain about the custardy blobby creature, but Kevin probably wouldn't believe him. Kevin's tummy had started to rumble. Spanner knew what he meant. His tummy was rumbling too. As if they could read their minds, two custard blobby creatures rose up in front of Kevin and Spanner. Hello, blubble blubble, said one of the creatures. We can hear two rumbly tummies, blubble blubble. Hello, said Kevin. Uh, yes, we are very hungry. Duck in then, said the second creature. Well, thank you, said Kevin. Custard's my favourite. Um, have you got a spoon? He asked politely. What is a spoon? Asked the wobbliest blob. It's something that we used to eat with, said Kevin. Here we just eat and make a big mess, blobble blobble, the blob replied. Kevin liked the sound of that, and so did Spanner, who never used spoons anyway. Kevin scooped the sweet sticky custard up into his mouth with his hands. Spanner just licked. It really was delicious, almost as good as a bone. Kevin and Spanner carried on scooping and licking and getting messy until eventually they just couldn't manage another drop. Thank you, said Kevin. That was really tasty. The two blobs blobbled a custody goodbye blobble and just disappeared. Ah, mused Kevin. They just come and go as they please. Maybe we'll meet them again someday. Come on, Spanner. It's time to go. <laughs> a planet made of custard. Oh, yummy. <laughs> That's three exploring stories we've made. Uh, with your help, too, of course. Yeah. A good night's work, one and all. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Milton, the morning's here. Yes, we must hide away before the children come. Yeah. Indeed, we must. The dawn is upon us. The morning is nigh. We've made our stories, and we bid you goodbye. Till the rising sun. Story makers, story makers, stories are fabulous. Stories are happy. Bye, story makers. <laughs> See you again soon.